All right, so I picked this up. I actually had it shipped to the house. Um, I believe the company is Theorem. Uh, I've heard it pronounced Theorem and Therm. I don't know which is correct. And they call it a Pyro Vault Lighter Armor. So basically what it is, is a case that you put your Zippo in or a similar type of lighter. And it's supposed to be waterproof. It's supposed to be tough. You can attach it to things. Um, and it's also supposed to, with a, a Zippo, keep the fluid from evaporating. I know with like your standard Zippo like this, it doesn't take long and the, uh, the fluid's gone. So what I went to is this, which looks like a Zippo, but it's actually a, a Thunderbird. And this is actually butane, but it gives you the same type of same type of flame, but it doesn't evaporate. But I do like the Zippo, always have. So I was like, well, maybe I'll give this a shot and we'll see how it works. So uh, we'll take it out of the package and get a closer look. So this comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, I got this one in like the olive drab color. They also make it in a bright orange. So they got a clip on here. I guess that's supposed to be compatible with like molly webbing. I'd be kind of leery on clipping it on anything because I don't think it would take too much and that would pop off. So, and then it's got like a spring-loaded top. So, pop and that's how you open it. And then, uh, well, there's actually some instructions in here. But on the inside you can see there's an O-ring that comes around. And then on the inside of this cap it's kind of like beveled. So that when you close it, it should seal this completely and it should keep the water out and hopefully keep the Zippo fluid in there. So and it is made in USA, so that was another reason why I was like, well, I'll give it a, a try. This is some of the, the finish on it here. You can see they maybe could have did a little bit with, with that there, just the way it seemed together. Maybe could have polished that out a little bit. Um, it's not cheap. I think the the least expensive I saw it was $29.95. So it's quite expensive. And then if you don't have a Zippo, um, they sell the zip just the insert of the Zippo for $12. So what I ended up doing is going to Walmart and I found this, which is called like the street I don't know street something cover or case. So it looks all beat up and it's kind of like rough around the edges. So this was nine bucks and that includes the case. Oh, this one dried out already. And the uh, the lighter, this, like I said, this one's brand new and I just filled this up not that long ago. Yeah, it looks like there's nothing there. So that's why I bought this one. I was like, well, nine bucks, I'll use this as the insert and this will be our, uh, our test one. And I guess what's kind of interesting too is that on the bottom here, the, the Zippos have the, oops, the year that they're made and this one says 21 so it must be 2021 the other Zippo I have is actually 2001 so it's exactly 20 years apart since the last time I got a Zippo so, I don't know I find that interesting so we'll uh, we'll fill it up and we'll see what we got here all right so I'm going to show you how to put the Zippo in here this isn't going to be the one we're going to use for the the test we're going to test and see how long the fluid actually lasts. I'm just going to show this for demonstration. So to put the thing in, you got to make sure the flipper is up and that the wheel on the Zippo lines up with the clip side. Push it in and then it just clips on. So I know there's been some complaints about how this clip here on this side when you go to kind of spin it, it's hard to and it is, it's more difficult. You'd think this clip could be designed a little different kind of in the way that's how it looks feels all right it says it's a one one hand open which I guess it is and the biggest the biggest thing I want is just that it keeps the zippo from uh, running out of the fluid or evaporating that would be neat this wouldn't be too bad to carry in a pocket um, or I guess if you had a thin smaller belt narrower belt I guess you could probably clip that on and it does I did try standing up on a table it does stand on a table like this it does have these two feet which I don't know I thought this could maybe be designed a little different too you don't have too much surface here for this to 
stand on these two legs. Could have probably just flattened it out, but I guess there must be a reason. So it says it fits classic fluid and butane inserts. It's an O-ring seal, minimizes evaporation. So they don't give you any time frame on how long it's supposed to last, but we're gonna we're gonna test that and we'll find out. We're also gonna test to see if the thing uh, fills up with water. But before I do that, I'm gonna take the Zippo out and then we'll dunk it and see what we get. All right, so here is the new Zippo that we're going to use. I've had it filled up one other time before. And this is, you can tell my hand's wet. This is way over full. I just completely filled the thing up and I'm just letting it sit kind of upside down like this to let it soak in really, really well before we put it in there. So I'm giving it a fighting chance here. It's way overfilled. You'd never want to carry it in your pocket like this because you would have just a pocket full of uh, lighter fluid. And the lighter fluid I'm using is just the, the ro Rosinol or whatever it's called in the yellow bottle. So, which I think is made by Zippo. I don't know. I don't understand that whole issue there either. What? Because I know you can buy actual Zippo brand, but then I think I think this stuff says it's made by Zippo. I'm not sure. So this is what I'm using. And if you come down to the bottom, it says our registered trademarks of Zippo Manufacturing Company. So I don't know, maybe they bought them out or something. I have, I have no idea. And this is a pretty large container here. <laughs> 12 fluid ounces. All right, so we're gonna use this bowl of water here and just for uh, clinical scientific reasons here, this is uh, soft water that came out of the tap that's also filtered, just so that if there are any questions on all the type of water you use. Also, it doesn't specify on here, um, it just says waterproof. It doesn't say like how many, what is it, fathoms or atmospheres or feet or anything like that. Uh, you can actually go with it before it starts leaking. It just says waterproof. It doesn't say water resistant. It says waterproof. So, uh, without further ado, let's take this and put it in here. And I'm going to do this for uh, do a five minute test. And it's going to float for some reason. Oh, I need a rock or something. That's kind of an inside joke, I guess. Uh, we'll use this. This will be our or something. This. Uh, baby food container filled with brass screws. So I'm gonna set a timer and what did I say, five minutes? What do I got it set for order? I think I have it set for 10. We'll do, uh, well, if I can find it here, 15, I got it set for 15 minutes. That's a good round number. So let's go 15 minutes that's fully submerged in the soft water and we'll come back and check and see if there's any water on the inside. All right, so that's been uh, 15 minutes. So let's take our or something out of the way here. What I'm gonna do before we even try to open this thing, I'm just gonna dry off the outside, move our bowl of softened water here out of the way. And just kind of dry it off, maybe shake it a little bit, just to make sure there's no like specks of water, little drops. Um, I think it's going to be fine. I really do. It seems like that just the way it's designed with that O-ring and that beveled top, there's no way that water is going to get in there. Oh, all these little crevices here do a good job of holding the water here. There's still some underneath this latch here, the way it looks, and in the back. All right, I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call that good. Let's pop it open and see what we got. So I don't know if you can see in there or not, but oh, no, you can't see anything. Well, you probably still can't see anything. Um, it's dry. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing in there at all. Nothing on the inside of the cap here either. Oh, I know what the problem is. This white towel. It's goofing us up. There we go, huh? So, I still can't really get a focus in there, can I? It's too dark. But even on the inside of the cap, there's nothing. So, I would say it's it's a pretty good uh, 
water waterproof design here. You know, it looks like there's a little water on the O-ring, which should be. If it's keeping it out, there'd be a little bit there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, let's throw our uh, Zippo in there that we're going to test and go from there. All right, so here it is. This is still extremely wet. It's very saturated. So we're going to put that in there, and we are going to see how long this will last. So I'm going to go 30 days on this. So we'll check back in 30 days, and we will see if the Zippo still lights. If it does, I would say, yeah, these are probably worth the money. If not, I probably wouldn't buy it again. Um, like I said, this is 29 bucks. I, I would rather just spend the money on that Thunderbird butane lighter. It just seems to be a little bit better, but we'll see. We'll see how this thing, how this, how this thing does. And this company has all sorts of like lock boxes like this too, that are supposed to be waterproof. Um, I wouldn't doubt it. This does a, a good job uh, keeping everything inside here dry. Uh, we'll see if it keeps the Zippo fluid from evaporating, but just to show you, there it is. And like I said, I got it super soaked, so we will go exactly 30 days and we'll come back and we'll see what we find. That'll be it for now.